Hey guys, Davin Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about LED phototherapy in the management of melasma and disorders of pigment. Now, LEDs are super, super common. Over the past five years, there's been an increase in the amount of LEDs, both in clinic, but you can buy different things like wands, you can buy things like masks, and even applicators for at-home use. Now, phototherapy itself is not a new concept. Um, dermatologists have been using it for the past 30 years. However, in the recent onset of technology, these products can now be made uh, cheaply and they can be incorporated as an at-home treatment for various skin conditions, including acne, melasma, skin rejuvenation, photoaging, as well as treatment of uh, cosmetic concerns such as lines, wrinkles, and pores. So today's video, I'll concentrate on one aspect, which is the treatment of melasma with phototherapy or with LED, also known as light emitting diodes. And there's a spin on the name, which is basically low level laser therapy. So LEDs, they're different types. In, in this video, I'll go through which types are safe and which types are unsafe to use for the treatment of melasma. So melasma, as you know, is a very common condition. It affects um, women more so than men and presents a stubborn pigmentation. It's caused by three things and three things only, genetics, hormonal factors, and radiation. And the radiation varies between UVB, UVA, and of course, visible light, and also infrared light itself. Bring all this in mind, how do LED treatments treat melasma? So LED stands for light emitting diode. It produces one wavelength of light. So in each LED device, one light bulb produces one wavelength. And the wavelength can be as simple as blue, which is around the 420 nanometers, it can also be red at around 630 nanometers. And then there are other wavelengths as well around these 830 nanometers. So the yellows, the orange, the ambers. Now, in the context of treating melasma, you should always avoid blue light. So blue light is very useful for the treatment of acne because it kills the bacteria, which is found in pimples and pustules and zits, right? And the bacteria itself are very sensitive to blue light because they produce something called porphyrins. Porphyrins are absorbed by uh, preferably blue. You have some absorption in the red and that basically kills the bacteria and hence can help with acne lesions. The problem about using blue light in melasma is this, it stimulates your pigment cells as well. So if you do have melasma, you want to totally avoid blue light. And blue light, as I said, stimulates the melanocytes which produce melanin. And this makes your melasma worse. This is especially important in skin of color. In other words, patients with darker skin types. These patients have what, no, what? These patients have what's known as the OPSN gene, which is basically a receptor on your melanocyte, which is very prone to blue light activation. So above everything else, if you have melasma, avoid blue light. So these leaves several different action spectrums. In other words, the different wavelengths, including six. 30 nanometers and 830 nanometers. So when you look at different, um, I guess, at-home kits, for example, from Current Body um, and things like Omnilux, they often have these spectrums around 630 to 633 and around 830 nanometers. And that's the safe action spectrum for melasma treatment. So how does it work? LEDs treat melasma in a roundabout way, and it does so with a process called photo biomodulation or PBM. So what does photobiomodulation do? Basically, it's the wavelength of light that gets delivered to your skin and it causes a biochemical reaction in your skin that alters the state of the skin itself. And it's often an indirect mechanism, which is different from lasers, which works on the basis of something called selective photothermolysis. So lasers target a chromophore, in other words, a target pigment in the skin, for example, melanin, or your blood vessels, which have been implicated in melasma formation, and that causes a reaction that's immediate and a reaction which is targeted. In contrast, photobiomodulation creates a pathway that's not specific. In the context of melasma, it can modulate gene expression. In other words, the genes that actually produce pigment. So it can modulate the enzyme called tyrosinase, which gives you pigmentation. So it does so in the roundabout way. So first of all, modulation of enzymes. Secondly, it can decrease the amount of blood vessels. And we know that with melasma patients, you have a disorder of the blood vessels itself. The receptors are VEGF as well as the plasminogen pathway. So it can modify the amount of blood vessels and the amount of inflammation in your skin. So that's number two. 
Thirdly, it can increase the transcription of genes which repair the basement membrane. The best basement membrane is the thing which separates your epidermis from your dermis. And when we repair that basement membrane, we make the skin stronger and there's less evidence or there's less chances of your melanocyte having drop out into the dermis itself. So strengthening of the basement membrane through upregulation of collagen is another pathway. And finally, you can modulate the inflammatory cells which have been implicated in melasma. So they include mast cells which release histamine. And light itself can modulate these crosstalking between cells. In other words, the cells including your fibroblasts, which produce collagen, your mast cells, which produce histamine, your endothelial cells, which are basically found in your blood vessels, as well as your keratinocytes, your lymphocytes, etc. So that's how light actually modifies all of these key factors which may predispose to melasma. So do we as dermatologists use photobiomodulation much? The answer is no. It's not because it doesn't work. It's just that when you're in the context of things, medical therapy, when we're looking at your pigment correctors, your transamic acid, your pico lasers, your novel peels, they all work a lot better compared to just using LED treatments. The other flip side with LED treatments is that the dose has to be exact. So it can't be more than 20 millijoules because when you use a high powered LED, it goes the other way around. So it stimulates pigment. And when we're using LEDs, which incorporate heat into the actual action spectrum, in other words, your near infrared or infrared, and you produce heat, what happens? Your melasma gets worse. So there is a very narrow therapeutic window for LED phototherapy when it comes to melasma treatments. So we do use them, for example, for healing up of the skin, especially after laser treatment, but maybe not in the context of lasers for melasma because that's a totally different topic and we need to use low fluence lasers or pico lasers. So we use that for skin healing following fractional laser, but in the context of melasma, we may use that post peel. So we may give the patient a peel of, for example, Cosmolan or Dermamelan peel or one of the novel peels. And as a result, we bring the patients back maybe twice to three times in that one to two weeks because there is some skin inflammation which can calm down with something like a heel light or LED phototherapy. So guys, if you want to try LEDs at home, stick with a reputable brand, stick with the 630 nanometer, augment that with the 830 nanometer wavelength, avoid blue at all costs, and then augment that with obviously your sun protection and your specific pigment correctors. I've done many videos on melasma. I hope you like this and gives you some clarity as to how to treat melasma pigment effectively. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Bye for now.